purification and water. Fourteen centuries ago, the Prophet, peace be upon him, built a new nation here in the heart of Medina. And with the establishment of the rules of this nation, the Prophet, peace be upon him, established the principles of Islam in the heart of his companions. Purification was one of the most important of such rules as many forms of worship depend on it. According to the language of the Arabs, purification means cleanliness and being free from dirt. While in the context of Islamic jurisprudence or Sharia, ah, it means the removal of the state of ritual impurity as well as the removal of physical impurities and dirt. The purification of the heart from polytheism and sins or what Islamic jurisprudence calls inner purification is the first and the most important category of purification. The second category, physical purification, is concerned with making the body free from hadith or ritual purity and any physical impurity. So to purify the body, one has to be free from hadith, ritual impurity and any physical impurity. As for hadith, it is that which, when produced from or befalls a body, prevents a Muslim from acts of worship for which purification is a requisite. For example, salah or circumambulation of the Kaaba and other similar acts. And it, in turn, is divided into minor and major hadith. Minor hadith happens as a result of anything being discharged from the two passages, the urinary tract and the anus. For example, urine and feces. The scholars have come to a consensus that purification from these is achieved by performing wudu, which the Lord, exalted and glorified be He, described in His words, O you who believe, when you intend to offer the salah or daily prayer, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbows, rub by passing wet hands over your heads, and wash your feet up to the ankles. Major hadith is represented by janaba, that is, after sexual relations, which affects all the body. Purification from this state is achieved by ghusl, which the Lord, exalted and glorified is He, referred to in His words. If you are in a state of janaba, that is, after sexual relations, then purify yourselves by bathing your whole body. As for the second category of purification, it refers to making oneself free from physical impurities and dirt, and this involves the removal of any impurities from the body. Clothes And the place where one prays. As Allah says, And purify your garments. And in the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when any of you comes to the masjid, he should be mindful of his sandals. If he sees filth or dirt on one of them, he should wipe it off and then he can pray in them. To clean any impurity, one must use water. As for water, it is divided into two categories. The first one, pure water, is water whose color, taste, or smell have not been changed by any impurity. It could be plain or ordinary water whose characteristics are the same as when Allah created it. Whether it falls from the sky, for example, rain, snow or hail, or flows on the ground, for example, water from seas, 
rivers, springs, and wells. Allah says, And we send pure water from the sky. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said concerning sea water, It is pure, and its carrion, or dead animals, are lawful to eat. It is also possible that the water is used water, which has fallen from the limbs of one purifying himself. And if pure water has been mixed with a pure substance, like leaves of a tree, soil, or rust from a storage tank, for example, such that it has not been changed much, there is no harm in this. But if the water has been changed, and the change renders it such that it must be called something else, like tea, juice, etc., then it may not be used for purification, as in this case it is not called water. On the other hand, water can still be considered pure, even though it has been mixed with an impurity. This is when the purity is of a small amount, such that it doesn't change the characteristics of the water. This is according to what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said regarding the well of Buda'ah, in which impurities used to fall. Indeed, the water is pure, nothing renders it impure. As for the second category of water, it is impure water. This is water that filth, such as urine or feces, etc., has changed one of its three characteristics, its odor or color or taste. This water has then become impure and its usage is prohibited. A consensus has been reached by this, by the scholars of Islam. If one has doubts that some water is impure, and this water was originally pure, he should rely on its original state and assume it is pure. Similarly, if one suspects that something may be pure, but it was originally impure, he should similarly rely on its original state and so assume it is impure. 